Guru, that's what's on Blu-ray right now after having not been seen since Laserdisc. Is it, I was a teenage werewolf? Oh, it's scarier than that. Is it Song of the South? Oh, it's less racist than that. Hmm. I'm kind of stumped here. All right, give you a little hint. Triangle transitions. You don't mean. Yeah, it's the brain. Because Pinky died in a lab accident. The brain. Mind over matter. Hmm. M-O-M. -M. Well, gee, thanks, Mom. Never heard that one before. Anyway, The Brain is a 1988 Canadian horror film directed by Ed Hunt, best known by Gorehounds as the guy who also gave us Bloody Birthday. It was also part of what I like to call the 1980s era of 1950s nostalgia, and was partially inspired by Atomic Age Killer Brain movies like Donovan's Brain. Unfortunately, it was also a straight-to-video release back when being one was considered a death curse among film fans. So it didn't exactly make a whole lot of money, but despite that, though, it gained a sizable cult following over the years due to its crazy-ass plot and its badass cover art. Which is why it recently got a pretty badass Scream Factory release and is now getting a resurgence among horror fans. Huzzah! Sometimes it just works out in the end. So without further ado, let's turn on the TV and get ready for some independent thinking. For this week's Fiend, with a face, is none other than... The Brain. Oh man, I'm digging this vintage 1980s soundtrack. Though I shouldn't be too surprised, I mean, this was scored by Paul Zaza, after all, who some might know for his highly prolific work on such classic horror films as The Original Prom Night, My Bloody Valentine, and... Karate Dog? What the fuck? Bad Zaza, bad! You go to your corner and think about what you've done. The Psychological Research Institute, eh? Looks more like a giant sperm in a fish tank to me. Well, either that, or Elmer from Brain Damage had a tubby big brother he never told us about. The Brain, filmed in front of a live studio audience. Though, let's be real, soon to be dead studio audience. And now, here's your guide to independent thinking, Dr. Anthony Beryl Blake. I don't know if I want to be guided on anything by Mr. Reanimated Cunnilingus here. Turns out, though, this dude's name is actually Dr. Anthony Blake, and he's kind of like if you cross Tony Robbins with L. Ron Hubbard. A self-help guru with a penchant for pop psychology and a rather cultish following. Deep throat choke ya, if you will. In this complex world that we live in, we need all the help we can get to make those right decisions. That's why you, independent thinkers, have made this the number one show in the greater metropolitan area. Hmm, something's missing here. Wait, I got it! Ah, there we go. Much better. Following that, we're introduced to Becky, the angsty teenage daughter of Couch Potato Susan here, who decides to exercise her own independent thoughts. Dr. Blake's on. Don't you want to come down and watch him? No, I see him enough. Yeah, he was really good in Bride of Reanimator. Not sure how he survived the first movie, though. Unfortunately for Becky, she's got way bigger things to worry about than just the televised con artist. Like, who the hell put dry ice in her makeup container? That's what you get for causing global warming, Becky! Though I do love how the bear cries less from its eyes and more from its non-existent dimples. I guess they only had one take and were just like, fuck it, good enough. Which I totally understand, I mean, lord knows I've been there. I've seen enough hentai to know where this scene is going. Uh-oh, looks like someone's been playing with the lament configuration. Still not as bad as the last time I did, though. Yeesh. I did it. I did it. Hellraiser, here I come. Human memories, they have no place. No this isn't Hellraiser. Existence. This is 
Hellraiser Revelations! Unless you want to taste her blood. Seriously though, this Haunted Mansion remake looks cheap as hell. What is going on? I don't know. It really turned me on though. Again, again. Unfortunately for Becky though, the second time around does not end well. Though I do love the visual metaphor of chopping the umbilical cord before cutting to the dead mom. It's a small but nice touch. Now remember kids, this is your brain on hugs. Ho ho ho! Talk about a brain teaser! Give yourselves a hand, you independent thinkers. Yay! I'm an independent thinker! The next morning, we're introduced to our real protagonist, Jim, as he drives his rust bucket to school and meets up with his girlfriend, Janet, who also helps him cheat on tests, apparently. Jim, if you get caught, I'll get in trouble, too. I thought you said you loved me. <laughs> Those two ain't mutually exclusive, kid. Man, I've heard of piss takes, but this is ridiculous. So it turns out Jim is quite the prankster as he drops a bar of pure sodium in the school toilet. Which, if you don't know, pure sodium tends to have a rather volatile reaction with water, so this should be good. Wait, he dropped that into the toilet? Those are two very different pipe systems, so unless that teacher was drinking piss, then I call shenanigans. It's rain and piss, hallelujah, it's rain and piss, oh yeah. You know, we're learning in civics class right now how you're innocent until proven guilty. So you think you're in America, do you? Last time I checked. Actually, according to this road sign, you're in Canada, my dude. Turns out, though, Jim is not only a troublemaker, he also possesses the highest IQ in the school. However, his intellect and his energy is primarily channeled into causing trouble. And unless we can find some other alternative, I may have no choice but to suspend James. And if I do that, you won't graduate. Or, you know, you could find a way to educate him that actually engages him. Just a thought. No, no, much better to send him to a glorified after-school cult. That always results in well-adjusted individuals. Does your teenager have a discipline problem? Is he or she in trouble at school? Involved with... Drugs, alcohol, sex. At the Psychological Research Institute, we have the answer. And it's called Heavy Metal! So Jim's parents make an appointment for Jim to meet with Dr. Blake, but not before Jim gets one last laugh on Mr. Fuckface. Later that night, Jim and Janet get down and dirty. Oh shit, slasher cam! See, kids, this is why you don't stop at Camp Crystal Lake. It's just a bad idea. Not sure what happened to Jason's head, though. Guess this one must have come from Part 7. <laughs> you fools! Don't you know that jump scare pranksters never survive these movies? You might as well have Kill Me, Daddy written on your foreheads. Kill me? Daddy? Don't you kink shame me. I'm not trying to shame you or anything, I just, uh... I never knew my father. <laughs> Wait, where did this cop come from? That's some legit awkward-ass editing, not gonna lie. Anyway, the next day Jim enters the Psychological Research Institute which looks like something right out of THX 1138. They're taking over. The aliens. Dr. Blake's an alien. I tell everybody, but nobody believes me. I believe you. I've always believed you. Hey, hey, let you get it out again, huh? This is none of your business. Fun fact, if that mustache nurse's voice sounds oddly familiar, that's because he is famous for having voiced Beast in the X-Men animated series. Blue Boy, get those doors open! My name is Mr. McCoy, madam, not Blue Boy. 
You know you're the bad guy when your secret room looks like a villain's lair from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. See, he even has his own Krang! Shit, apparently I was wrong with my THX reference. Cause this is some straight up 1984 shit. What is Vivian holding in her hand, Jim? An apple. It is a baseball. And if the party says there are not four, but five, then how many? Five. I think you're both full of shit, because all I see are titties. One thing's for sure, though, I'll never think of the phrase boob tube the same way again. Now that is how you properly rack one's brain. Dr. Blake and his tadpole of doom trigger a sexy hallucination, which pisses Jim right the fuck off. Also, apparently the brain has a taste for both mice and sexy blondes. Huh. Must be a Rescue Rangers fan. That's food for thought. And that was a great one-liner that I really wish I had written myself. As much as I make fun of this movie, the brain is actually composed of some pretty awesome special effects. And this is because they were designed by Mark Williams, who had previously worked on such films as The Fly and Aliens. So he knew exactly what he was doing and was able to pull off a lot despite a very low budget. Anyway, after the brain gives birth to its own face, a phrase I never thought I would say, but here we are. And after Dr. Blake looks like he's about ready to throat fuck it, Jim's hallucinations literally drive him crazy. <laughs> Talk about being tongue-tied! I feel like this is the scene we all expected when we first heard about David Cronenberg's crash. Also, apparently the brain-induced hallucinations come with iMovie triangle wipes. Kinda weird, but I'll roll with it. Come give me a kiss, lover boy. When the high is so good, even your car trips. Luckily, Jim survives a rather excessive explosion and shows up at Janet's work, only to discover why you never look behind the scenes in fast food restaurants. <laughs> hey, that's not like Tentacool Man. Shit, guys, Jim looks like he's about to declare himself Pickle Rick. That'll teach him to stock more Szechuan sauce. Wait, what? No, don't shoot him up with heroin. This is the brain, not brain damage. Jeez, get your after-school special horror films right. Wait, you can't just take him away! Yes, we can. We have a release form signed by his parents. Well, me... And believe me, he checked that form twice, because he also played Santa Claus once. We end this tonight. Later, Jim awakens in an all-white room, but is thankfully let out by Mr. Alien Conspiracy Dude here just in time to catch the bad doctor in the middle of an expository monologue. The stronger it gets, the more minds it needs to control. It must expand or it will die. Like my dick! Oh man, dig this rock and chase music! <laughs> John Carpenter would be proud. Christ, I'm pretty sure his parents didn't sign a form for that! By the way, if you pay close attention, you might notice the sweater is inconsistently dirty throughout the entire movie. Which of course can only mean one thing. This movie's budget was very low and they probably had way more important things to worry about than the continuity of one sweater. No, don't go in there! You're clearly not ready for Freddy. Hmm, sodium in use, huh? Something tells me our hero's knowledge of sodium is gonna come in handy by the end of this movie. Call me crazy, but I got a feeling. Eventually, Jim meets up with Janet and his friend Willie, but unfortunately, their daring escape is foiled by a very spicy meatball. <laughs> you know what? I kinda like this gritty Pac-Man adaptation. Oh, fuck this shit, I'm out. Jim and Janet barely escape the Institute, only to run afoul the worst police officer ever. Don't worry though, my fellow gorehounds, he gets his just desserts. Ah, oh, come 
on, officer. No need to lose your head. Dang, this movie's got a twofer. It's not every day your giant man-eating brain movie also includes an axe-wielding psychopath, but I'm totally here for it. Thankfully, however, Jim and Janet successfully escape Nurse Choppy Chop, but not before he pins the cop murder on them. We gotta find somewhere to hide. Help me back to school. It's Saturday. It's Saturday! It's Saturday! It's Saturday! Yeah! <laughs> Dr. Blake and his colossal cerebrum use their show to signal boost the cop's murder, which in turn turns the entire town into brainwashed narcs. But even that ain't the worst of it. How many times have you asked your husband to watch this show and he has refused? Don't let him ignore you by ignoring me. Be assertive. Shit, man, they're all being videodromed. Today I learned that being assertive means whipping a chainsaw out on your dick of a husband. Wait, is that Mr. Fuckface from earlier? Never mind then, get him, girl. That dude's an asshole. Ah, <laughs> uh, you just gotta love the old ball and chainsaw. He killed him! Matt Chalowski got him in hell! Good God, these kids can't catch a break! The lovers break into the school and come to the startling realization that they can trust no one. Which makes sense, I mean, at this point this movie's kind of like Invasion of the Body Snatchers, but with a TV show, which is... Pretty damning social commentary, actually. But I don't think his hypnosis thing is permanent. If we kill the brain, everything should go back to normal. Kill the brain, and you kill the ghoul. Well, the whole world's turned on us, so might as well fuck. Well, shit, uh, this wasn't exactly the kind of boning I had in mind, but beggars can't be choosers, I guess. <laughs> I guess you could say she, uh, fucked his brains out. <laughs> Well, he's definitely of one mind. The cops storm the school with shoot-to-kill orders while Janet gets herself hypnotized. Which is just great, really. I suppose when you're wanted for murder, though, Grand Theft Auto wouldn't be as much of a concern. Here to Fort, pursuit of Magileski, heading out of town on Ray Street. Holy shit, this movie has everything. Axe murderers, a giant brain, hypnotized pod people, and even a fucking car chase. This movie's wild, man. Jim ditches the car to throw him off his trail and then waits for nightfall. But unfortunately, even under the cover of night, he's still recognized. And on the eve of independent thinking's nationwide broadcast, no less. In a few minutes, 10, 20 million people are going to see our show. And then you can transmit your brain waves into them. And after that, maybe you can transmit your dick into me. <laughs> so all that brain power, and yet somehow, it still couldn't even spell Jim's last name right. Checkmate, Uberbrain. I'm also endlessly amused that this killer brain talks in juvenile text messages. It's kind of adorable, actually. You see? The brain wants action. In other words, a mindfuck. I joke around a lot, but I actually really like what this movie is doing here. The idea of this TV show run by the snake oil salesman that promotes the idea of self-help and independent thinking, yet turns all those who watch it into brainwashed zombies, is an idea that's pretty relevant even in today's YouTube-dominated world. So while, well, yeah, it's certainly over the top and definitely not subtle, I gotta commend this movie for having something legitimate to say. And for having the balls to say it without any compromise. Anyway, Jim successfully breaches the Institute, but is stopped by a very familiar hallucination. This is your hallucination, Jim. You have a dirty mind. Dude, I think he's about to be mind blown. Thankfully, though, Jim doesn't fall for the same trick twice, and after a couple of obstacles, makes his way to Dr. Blake's broadcast. <laughs> what? The alien conspiracy guy was right the whole time? Dr. Blake is an... is an... is an alien? What a brain twist! 
Side note, but I legit wonder if they made a new mold for actor David Gale's head here, or if they just repurposed his old one from Reanimator. If so, I hope they at least wiped it off first. Ugh. Dr. Blake was trying to take over by controlling your minds through television. Sorry, Jim, but uh, the revolution will not be televised. Anyway, time for another chase scene, and uh, this time he actually saves the girl first. What a gentleman. Hi guys, The Brain here. Could you do me a favor and uh, remember to like, comment, and subscribe, because uh, it would really help me out. Well, hello, nurse. And also goodbye, nurse. Man, I haven't seen characters this boxed in since the opening of Child's Play. <laughs> anyway, the brain corners our heroes and then slips Janet some tongue. Talk about sapiosexual, am I right? Luckily for them, though, Jim's sodium prank finally comes full circle. <laughs> Now that is what I call brain fried. <laughs> and so the day is saved, the sweater is somehow clean again, and our heroes are finally able to move on with their lives. At least until the brain tries to make out with the audience again, of course. Come give me a kiss, lover boy. Oh, the brain. I lobe you. I lobe you so much. It's way too easy to dismiss the brain as a hodgepodge of way more popular movies, which, let's be real, it kinda is. It just so happens to also be a very enjoyable one. Now personally, I love the fuck out of this movie. I love the effects that went into making it, I love all the cheesy performances, I love the homages to the films that inspired it, but most of all, I love how fucking relevant it is. Because when you strip out all the gore and the humor, The Brain at its core is a movie about brainwashing, mind control, and collective groupthink. And while yeah, I know there are other movies that tackle the same concepts with much better results, there's still something charming about this crazy little movie that makes me want to come back to it over and over again. It just feels so goddamn genuine, and even the bad parts of it are only bad in a highly enjoyable way. At least, that's my galaxy brain take anyway. Oh shit! It's a brainstorm! Tuck and cover, motherfucker! Oh shit! Oh fuck! Oh! oh, 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 oh. Thanks, Scream Factory! Oh. And with all that said, my fellow Gorehounds, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to check out my Patreon page. And if you decide to go the Patreon route, know that even a dollar a month can go a long way. And uh, obviously, I'll link the Patreon link in the description below, so go check that out. Now that that's all out of the way, it's time for me to spend some alone time with uh, my own mind, you know, for a little, you know, bit of a mind fuck. Action. And it's called Heavy Metal. Get your one-way ticket to midnight, call it. <laughs> God, God. I just made myself so fucking dizzy. <laughs> Welcome, you gore